Talk about the, the people behind the scenes, Mike. Now, we all know about John Insurance, but a lot of people don't understand how much work the groom, the hot walker, the people who live with these horses put in. How much do those people, and especially in the case of Zenyatta, I mean, the, the, the guy and his wife who were the grooms, yeah, they, they live with this Mario horse. Mario and Carmen. Mario and Carmen. Yeah. Zenyatta loves them, too, man. It's amazing. She's, uh, she's so attached to those two. It's, it's incredible to watch. I mean, they, they're the whole crew, you know, down to, uh, you know, Everyone who even who gets on her, I mean Steve Willard who gets on her, I mean everyone, it's just an amazing, amazing crew and I'm just blessed to be part of it. Let's talk about some of her races, Mike, and, and, and first of all, how did you get on her? Because you have not always been her rider. Her first three races, David Flores rode her, she broke her maiden right here at five to one, and David stayed on her for the next two. How did you get the mount on Zenyatta? He's actually, it was my mount to start with. And, and uh, I won on a, a filly called Tessa Blue, I, I just won a, a 500,000 on her. And then she was going to run back in a grade one at Churchill. The same day Zenyatta was going to run. John decided to run her going three quarters. We, we, we thought we were going to run a little farther, so I thought it would be okay to go out of town. He caught you off guard, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, but he says, you know, don't worry about it. It's, it's just three quarters. She's going to be so far back. I mean, she's probably going to need the... I mean, we didn't know she was Zenyatta. We knew she was Zenyatta, but not, not the Zenyatta, you know. <laughs> so we didn't think it'd be, you know, a, a big deal. She'd probably get beat, you know, I'd come back and I'd ride her the next time. But I got beat. And I was uh, in the hotel in Executive Wells, and I'll never forget this, I swear. I'm sitting next to some people there, and I said, I got there just in time to watch her maiden race. And and she broke out of the gate, and I was like, yes, she's way back. <laughs> she's going to get beat today. For me, she's going to get beat today. I'll get back. You know, no big deal. So I started talking, because she was back there like last. I, by the time I talked and said, I looked, I said, oh my God. <laughs> what a mistake this was. And all that. And you're Still thinking that I'm going to get her back. I really did. And I went into the barn the next day. I mean, I came out the next morning. I flew all the way back. I said, John, what is Well, you know, David did a great job. I said, oh, Worker, you know, no, don't. He goes, well, you chose to go, and I said, you said it was okay, and all we had this. <laughs> anyway, David got to ride her you know, two more times after that, and I was blessed to, to have gotten her back. Uh, Scott Domala was going for the Kentucky Derby, the Santa Anita Derby, actually, he was in, and, and right. John decided to go ahead and run Zenyatta in the Apple Blossom. I wasn't, I, I'm, you, you have to ask him this, I'm just guessing this, but I think he ran her because it was an opportunity for me to get her back. Because he wasn't sure, you know, her first big stake race to go run against Ginger Punch and all yeah. these other horses shipping and then being on dirt and everything. And we were taking Tiago for sure. And I think that kind of was the straw that went ahead and said, you know what? You, here's your shot to get her back, he said, but you have to win. Just don't get her beat. <laughs> yeah, you have to win. I was like, yeah, okay, David ordered a maiden race and, you know, I have to ride her against, you know, Ginger Punch and, and, and all these great horses. And, and not only did she win, but she won. Very, very impressive. That's probably her largest margin of victory. I was on the dirt, and then, uh, and then Tiago came back and also won the, the yeah. handicap. You know what a day that was. And Worked was, out perfect. It was a great flight back. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the, the, the narrow way down to Del Mar uh, in the Clement oh, Hirsch. I mean, at the quarter that pole, <laughs> that was your fault. <laughs> at the quarter pole, it looked like you had no chance. Did, did, were you overconfident? Did you ride too, too, too carefully that day? Yeah, you know, I really thought Life is Sweet was a filly to beat. And, you know, when he got down to these last few races, uh, you know, there were short fields and everyone knew where I was at and everyone was looking for me and looking to trap me and looking to take me out, looking to do this, looking to do that. So I was always having to ride, you know, not only ride my filly, but then ride, you know, it's almost like uh, trying to get around the, the whole field because everyone just seemed to know where I was at. You can't miss her. Just look back because yeah. she's a giant. And know? everyone's riding your horse in addition to Everyone's you. riding and having to, to counteract, you know, even more than you normally would. And, and, and I just said, you know what, I'm just going to sit behind life. It's sweet. I need he feels like waiting that long with him, I'll wait that long with him. But then I got to looking up, I said, oh my God, they're getting away from us. So I went ahead and kicked around him, and I really felt that at all times I was going to catch him. Even though it was a short margin, I really didn't think that, that, that she, they were, I was, I was going to get beat. I honestly believed I was going to win. And She got to run probably the last sixteenth of a mile, which she really got to run, and she stretched her legs out, caught him, and then I stood up, and, and about, it seemed like five jumps after that, she was 10 in front of the field. So. All in all, it's probably a blessing that, that it was an easy race for her. You know, it didn't take nothing out of her. She only had to run tops, not even an eighth of a mile. And it was great because she stayed fresh and it brought her in, you know, it brought her in here in great order. When you watch the replay, were you that confident you were going to win? Or did you, did you well, you get more nervous watching it. Yeah. You know, when you're on her, it's, it's not that way. You're just it's, reacting it's, when you're it's, on it's, it's, I, I, I guarantee if I would have, you know, I only flagged her a little bit. If I would have reached back and touched her one time, she would have won by half a length. Easy. Yeah. Easy, easy. That, I know it because I, I, I just made her jump. Two more jumps. I, I was just letting her get, un, un, you know, let her stretch her legs out. Honestly, is all she was doing.
Uh, you've talked often about not getting to the bottom of Zenyatta. Uh, did, how close did you get in the Breeders' Cup Classic, or, or did you get there? No, I don't know. He's the only horse that I've ever felt that's bottomless. And when, you, when you get to the bottom of the horse, that means uh, they're all out, and you can feel it. I mean, they feel like they're giving you their all, and, and, and nothing else is going to happen but, but slow down or, or, or veer to the left, veer to the right if you ask them for any more. That's all they have. And with her, I've never, I've never felt... I've never felt that. I've never felt like I've gotten even gotten close to it. Right, seventy-five percent, eighty. I'd say about eighty-five the other day, ninety the other day, maybe. You know, I mean, just out of respect, I have to, but yeah. I really don't know how much more was there. I really think that if if there was somebody else in front of her, I, I could have caught them too. Could have right? kept on going. I just asked her a little more, and she just <laughs> gave you a little more. Now you've ridden some great horses, like and had a heck of a career. You're a Hall of Fame. You've ridden, uh, you know, Holy Bull and Skip Away and Inside Information and Azari. I mean, Hall of Fame horses. You won the Derby on Giacomo. But about five years ago, your career was in a lull, to say the least. Is it amazing what's happened since that point? Jocko with the Derby, Azari coming around. I mean, you were in a, in a career lull, of it. really. You had, business was tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I had broken my back in 98, and I came back uh, way too soon. And really a bad, bad judgment on my part. I mean, I, I wasn't ready to even ride one horse, let alone try to ride three or four of them. And, and it, and it and it showed, you know. And once it, once it shows, you know, the people don't get that out of their mind. And as I got better, they still felt the same way. And yeah. you know, and I knew the ability was there. I mean, it didn't go away. And I felt great. And I started feeling better. But I just needed to make a move. And I remember having dinner with with Shug McGahey, uh, who I rode for for many years in New York. He said, you know, Mike, go out there and give it a shot. He said, really work hard. He says, right now you're sour over here because you did so well. Now you think these people owe you. And it's just not going to happen here. You need to go somewhere else where where. You know, no one owes you nothing, and you're gonna go work hard. And you're gonna just gonna take one good horse, and you'll be right back. And it was this area to start with. You know, she she popped up out of nowhere. It was like as soon as I got here, she was just Philly. You know, and I was so blessed with her. And then then the Mosses came around. I got uh, Giacomo, and he, you know, of course he did what he did. We win the Kentucky Derby, then Tiago win the Santa Anita Derby. Then here comes this thing sent from heaven. I mean, it's just it's just been amazing. Who's next? <laughs> Maybe today. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to that horse in a while. You get on the main, you ride a bit later on for the Mosses. Uh, also, uh, talk about Mike. I know I have never ridden a horse. I, I can't ride a horse. I'm clueless. I, I'm betting most of these people have never ridden a horse. We've never Some ridden of these people don't think I can at times. <laughs> well, I've said that about you at times too. When you've got to stop behind horses and a horse that's full of run, but we'll leave that for another time. Uh, and no one out here has ridden race horses. Talk about a day like that when you're coming down the stretch and do you hear anything? You know, a lot of times athletes will say they don't hear the crowd. They don't hear anything because they're just focused on hitting that baseball or throwing that football or shooting that ball, and in your case, getting to the wire. That day, I mean, I've been going to San Diego my entire life, 25, 30 years. I've never heard anything close to that reaction for a horse race. What did you hear out there when you're coming down the lane? I, I literally, it, it almost knocked me off of her. I swear, I mean, the fans, went, you guys went crazy. I mean, especially when she got to the outside. I mean, this is roar. Even Zinata went, whoa. Like, oh, no, 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 we gotta go. Forget about them. No, I'll take a picture. Watch this. It was, just, it was incredible. I got goosebumps talking about it. And then there was still, the, you guys continued, continued, continued to yell that she stopped. And she spun around so fast just to look back. And then she started dancing, like, let me back. Let me back. Now, keep it on. You know? She wanted to come back. It's like it was nothing, you know, and I was like... <laughs> 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 yeah, I was blowing twice as hard as...